if it does make him feel better, I will buy the house off, off him. But <laughs> I just want to say. The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge. There's something about Ed Sheeran. I don't, I, you know what? It, you could talk about his talent. You could talk about his uh, incredible aura. He's got such positivity and he's just a great guy. But there's something about Ed Sheeran I can't put my finger on that just makes him extra, extra cool and special. He's the goat. He's the goat. He is. Personality. <laughs> Everything. Sense of humor. And he's here. <laughs> and we got to talk to him now. Please oh. welcome. Oh, there's Edward there Sheeran. Is. Live from the Mercedes Benz <laughs> Interview Lounge. We missed. We missed. We missed. Sit down. We're on the radio. That was the smoothest hey, high five I've ever I, seen. In it. <laughs> how, what's going on? You. I was just trying to work out how many times I've been on this show. How many times? I just, Do we know? Well, I reckon twice per album, at least. So I, I reckon at least ten, right? Well, okay. Yeah. I'll yeah. buy that. Yeah. Well, you're always welcome here. I, we never, I feel very welcome. We never get tired of your presence. He's Thank like you. like family, Ed. You're like family. Thank you. Yeah. You are. You're a member of the... You're, a member of the fa- you're like furniture. Well, I'm may, I'm super happy to be back. Good. Well, thank you for back. coming in. We we got to talk about so much stuff. We have to talk about music. Yep. Travel. Yeah. Six foot penises. <laughs> yeah. I still cannot believe that you do that. We'll get well, into that. Well, yeah, I, we'll get we'll get into that. Okay. If you want one, you just have to like. After what? What do well, I Well, they're do? not they're not like <laughs> cheap, so I don't want to send one and it just gets put in well, a closet somewhere. No, wait, I want it we, to be like we're moving to new studios, so we thought. Maybe some artwork. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I, I will totally, totally, totally get you one. Okay, we'll get into the six foot penises. <laughs> this is a real thing, by the way. And let's see. God, I've got a list of things i got to talk to you about before we get to the music. The music's the most important part. The tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tour. <laughs> Fireworks, explosions, everything. This yeah. is going to be We've pretty... just announced our second MetLife as well. I'm I very, know. very excited about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're you're yeah. kicking off the uh, United States, I think, in Dallas, in Arlington, Texas. Is yeah, that yeah, yeah. Right? See, I don't know. You go to so many different venues. Do you just forget where you are sometimes, Ed? No, I think because I, uh, when I did the Taylor tour in 2013, we played all these venues, and I beca- it was when I first discovered American football. Mm-hmm. And so you learn all the teams, and then you're mm-hmm. playing the venues with the teams. So, like, and then I moved here and got super into watching American football. So I know I know the venues quite well just from watching TV, you know? Well, the reason I'm a little tired today, up late watching the Eagles pounce yeah. the Dallas Cowboys. So are you an Eagles fan or a Cowboys fan? <laughs> he doesn't even know what He's a, a fan right. of the Titans. Right, right. right. Yeah. I'm a Titans fan, Tennessee, because when I first moved to Nashville, I went to Walmart to buy some uh, pajamas. Mm-hmm. And I just picked up whatever and put them on. And then someone was like, oh, you're a Titans fan. And I was like, am I? And, <laughs> uh, and so See? since then, yeah. That's how my husband is a Steelers fan because he was born in the UK and they didn't have American football then. He wrote a note to every single American football team and the Steelers was the only team that sent him stuff. And so he's been a Steelers fan ever since. Amazing. Whatever it takes. That's how it does You're, you're now a yeah. fan. Yeah. You know me, I just... I go to the game, but I, somehow I get in. I never leave the locker room. <laughs> I'm in there just to make sure they're happy. Amazing. <laughs> what a team player. I know. I'm yeah. there for the team. I've lost touch with it a bit since moving back to England because um, the well a- actual football, soccer, is sort of like takes over England. Mm-hmm. Hey, do okay. you follow? Do you follow soccer? Yeah, we'll, we'll see you Danielle. guys are in. You guys are in our group in. Um, the World Cup. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 it's going to yeah, be a big game, that. I know. Danielle's actually, years ago, she was the one that actually brought soccer to our shores. The World Cup to you. Yeah. Mm. Here it is, yes. Because my kids play, my yeah, husband came. Yeah, of came, course. You know, well, this yeah. is what I never understand. It seems to be like the most popular sport in school for kids, oh but it's gosh. not the most popular sport in America. Oh. And my theory on this is <clears throat> it's 45 minute halves without commercial breaks. Right. And I think that you're never going to get a primetime TV slot. It's all about the money, man. Money. Yeah. I, re- no, I honestly believe that. Like, because it's, it's it's Definitely. 45 minutes of yeah. no commercials. Speaking of you living in the UK, um, we were in London not long ago. We were staying at the Ham Yard Hotel. Yeah. Cool. And there's a little pub right next door. I think you shot a video there. Probably. You should <laughs> there's know a lot. These things. I've done. I've yeah. I've done a lot of a lot of things in a lot of pubs. <laughs> yes, you have. <laughs> oh no, but they have your picture up, and I think they're actually saying this is the pub where Ed Sheeran shot his video. So we were in there just. Can you remember which video? No. No, not no, at all. No, no. I, but I, I, know I like, 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 like most of my videos end up being shot something in a pub. There's mm-hmm. always something. Hey, Nate, do a search for yeah, Ham yeah, Yard yeah. Hotel Pub Next Door Ed Sheeran video. <laughs> oh, it might be the one I did with Russ recently. I think could be. Mm. I don't know, but I was yeah. there. They, the, but they love the fact that your your video was shot there. I mean, mm. it changed their lives. I don't know, Ed. You know, you're such an easygoing guy. I don't. I just want you to understand when you. Go up on a stage and sing your music, or you just walk into a room and hang out with friends. You actually 
You actually leave a footprint you know, everywhere you go. Well, thank you, man. On hearts, in our minds. It's, I see. It's cool. I see the two things as very separate, though. Like me as a person, and me me as the performer. Because I think if I like, you have to you have to have an ego as a performer to be able to walk on stage and be like, I've got this. Yeah, I can stand on stage mm -hmm. and entertain these people. But if you take that off stage, then you're literally walking around twenty four seven, being like, I'm the man. You know. So I, there, I have a real separation of uh, performer and person. And do you mind if I if I? You're probably you're probably the same because you have to turn it on every morning on the radio. But like uh, off radio, you're not gonna like walk into your kitchen and be like, "Hi, it's Elvis Duran yeah, in the morning." No, no, he does. He does. No, this does not shut off. I'm a total a hole everywhere. <laughs> right. I don't believe this. Around, around the clock. I don't. No, believe but this. you say that you are a different guy hanging out with friends versus how you are on stage performing. I get that. I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't say like different guy, but I'm not like that you do have to bring ego on stage you have to it. otherwise you just crumble you'll it's crumble like alter yeah. ego. but at the same time i love watching you perform because i feel like you're ed yeah. I, well, thank I, you. I think there's a thin See, line between ed and ed i was saying like i know like you're gonna bring like an orchestra or something this time around mm. but when i saw you at the barclays it was you and mm. your guitar and that was it and i was just like this is talent well like, it's still you it, can do that it's still that but i sort of on the last tour it, we ended the last tour and it was so like heavily publicized how many tickets we'd sold and how many people had seen the show and i was like I, when i come back next time i can't just do the same show i can't just get on stage and be like here's the loop pedal show again <laughs> but also at the same point like for the last 12 years of my career that's the show that everyone's wants to see mm -hmm. so we i've made it different by this i mean the stage is mad it took like three years to build this stage and you can sort of see like even the nosebleed seats are great views of the stage it's in in the round and then there's a band for like we play i think like 28 songs and there's a band for like seven songs and the band is there to make those songs better so like when i used to play galway girl on the loop pedal i, I was always thinking this doesn't sound that great and now it sounds great with a band so i just picked the songs that didn't sound great with the loop pedal and that's still my favorite amped, song amped so i can't wait i did a song with bruno mars and chris stapleton and i remember bruno messaging me being like it sounds so bad on the loop pedal so now we play it now we play it full rock band and then you know flames and fireworks and blow and it and it works okay whatever version we get of Ed Sheeran we're yeah, gonna be that's fine. fine do you have uh, a different name though for the alter ego when you're on stage when you get off like Beyonce and Sasha Fierce uh I wish I wish no give you I wish uh Eddie no there's no I mean it's it, I am essentially still the same person but you do all I'm saying is, I if I walked out on stage and was like, well, I don't know if they're gonna like it tonight. Like you, you know, you have if you're walking out in front of ninety two thousand people at Wembley, you have to be like, you guys are gonna like my show, and they're gonna be like, yeah, we are. <laughs> I, I think we should all learn from this. I mean, yeah. no matter what situation you're you're in, you gotta go like get yourself hyped. That's it. Get out there. Totally. Own it. Yeah. Totally. And the worst thing that can happen is that you fail and pick yourself up and try again. That's literally the worst thing that can happen. No, you have you have pyro, you have fireworks, you have a band. It, are you going to have six foot tall penises on the stage? <laughs> no. No, and we'll I feel like... The, we'll get to this in a minute, by the way. <laughs> you keep saying we're going to get to it in a minute. <laughs> it's called the penis tease. <laughs> That's what we do here. We tease hey, penises. Has anyone ever said no to you? Like, you've worked with so many artists and everything always, you know, comes out great, but have you ever called someone and they were like, yeah, no. I don't yeah, know. totally. Totally. But not, but not like... It's only like artists that I'd worked with before. So I never okay. like... It's never like a... Um, yeah, it's everyone has their own schedule and timing on things, and I've said no to people with uh, people that I've worked with before as, as as well because sometimes you're just about to release a record, sometimes you're like having time off, and sometimes it's just not the right thing. And I, I think the the thing that I find with any artist is all you just have to do is be be honest. Is when like people shut you out and don't reply, and that that and then you start thinking, well, is there a problem here? And yeah. it, if someone's just honest, like yeah, there's artists that. Did a, a song for an artist in like 2015 and I contacted them to do my collaborations project and they were like, oh, well, actually, actually at this point I'm taking a bit of a break from touring. And I was like, fair enough. But it doesn't stop us from being mates, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. Never talk to them again. How dare they turn me down? <laughs> hey, so speaking of artists, let's talk about, let's talk about the global, the global thing going on with Elton John. Mm. Now we had a uh, Charlie Puth in here last week. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Elton. We talk all the time. He's my neighbor. Yeah, no, no. I talked to Elton. Elton is like my consultant. Yeah. He helps me. Then, then you and Elton have the same sort of relationship. Elton is like, the, like the the grand. Boobah. And there's a reason, but there's a reason why. Talk about he it. is now. You know, he's a he's a well. He's always been a national treasure in England for like the last thirty years. But there's a reason why he is still having hits. 
And it's because he's not shut off to the new generation. There's so many older artists that are just bitter because it, their moment in the sun has ended. But all moments in the sun end. And it's more about what you can do for the next generation. And, and through Elton just being like, there's, there's artists that I grew up listening to, like English artists, that you know, when they say don't meet your heroes, I met them on the years that I was breaking and they right. were just like really like detrimental to, they're just like not happy for me at all and just would come yeah. out in the press and say, and say stuff. And I, and I was sort of like, man, is that going to be me when I'm older? Am I going to be looking at, you can be and, an then, cranky and then <laughs> seeing, seeing how Elton is with, with people, like he basically said, like, if you ever see anyone in like coming up as, you know, when people say it's the next this and the next that, just like contact them and become their mate and like b offer them advice because you know how difficult it was for you at the beginning. You can then help someone out and that he but just basically pays it forward. And I think it's like a really so I so I'm not saying I'm Elton John, but I'm in touch. I'm in touch with like Lewis Capaldi talking about his second album coming out and like talking about how it was for me to put my second album out, and listening to the songs and like helping him through that. And he comes around my house and we go for long walks and talk and. Um, Sean Mendes have spoken to him for like years and years and years and I just think that's the way to do it it's just because then because then you never feel like I find as well if you're like friends with people uh, their wins are your wins you feel like you're winning when that is you know? the key yeah. it's always great to help help friends help fellow colleagues in the music business to lift them up totally like, help them find what they're looking for they'll do the same for you it's an energy thing Wait, speaking of Louis Capaldi he was here <laughs> two weeks ago <laughs> and he's he's got a problem with you. This house you talked him into buying. He only said. He only said he, <laughs> you put the headphones no, no, on I know, I know exactly what he said. No, no, I want you to hear it from <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, You gotta hear it though. You gotta put your headphones on. I don't want to mess up your hair. Ed. <laughs> All right, here's a. We said, hey, a house. What? And we understood like every third word. <laughs> Some, subtitles. And, and here's what here's what Lewis Capaldi said. Yeah. No, no, Ed Sheeran so, told me to buy this house, and it's an absolute hell hole. So Ed Sheeran should technically reimburse me for the cash that I'm having to have pay you, on this. Have you brought, it, have you, have you no, brought I, this up to Ed? I, I saw him the other day, and he's a he's a shrewd businessman. There's no way he's going to go for that. But I love you, but you have. A plague on my life. Do you know what? Honestly, that I will never be able to be rid of. There you go. Oh, you, you know what? Honestly, yeah. your if it does, if it does make him feel better, I will buy the house off off him. But <laughs> I just want to say, I just want to say, like I, um, he basically was like, I'm looking for a home. I didn't just send him one. I sent, I sent him a bunch, and he went to view them. Right. So <laughs> he went to view it and was like, I like this enough to buy. Um, and what I said to him is, I was like, look, you can have your flat in the city but you need to start uh thinking of what your forever home is going to be because at the time that you want your forever home uh you you could have been building it for 15 years and making it this perfect spot to have like a family in mm -hmm. or then you could just be 15 years into it and then looking for something and then spending 15 years so i was just i i just said find something that you can do up and make into your ex the exact thing you, you want your forever home to be and I imagine it's yeah, it's not great. He said he found like a bag, like a like a shopping bag of live frogs in it. Like yes. I think it's. <laughs> and he also said it smells like uh, old cigarette smoke and dirty feet. Totally, but but like I didn't send him this house, and he <laughs> didn't he didn't like ring them up and just went, I'll take it. Like he went to view it. So yeah, when he went to view it, it didn't smell like cigarettes and smell. Well, he thought the smell would go went, away. Oh, is that what? <laughs> I have okay. a lot of questions about that. Bag of frogs. I honestly, like, 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 frogs. like, like, honestly, like, I, I mean, I speak to him m most days, but if he wants me to buy, it, like, I, why not? Why no, not? no, make him suffer. <laughs> he needs to learn a lesson. You can't just leave your mom's couch and buy a house and get a refund on it. Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll get to the six foot penis in a moment. So, but, my gosh. But Charlie Puth said you sent him gimp masks. No, I send Courtney Cox gimp masks. Oh. I haven't. I haven't sent Char Charlie. Has worn one of Courtney's gimp masks before. Oh. I'm sure he has. He has. See, Charlie didn't tell us the truth. <laughs> no, basically, basically, Courtney has um, Alexa there, and when Alexa was this like new thing, then you could just speak and be <laughs> like, "Order this." You know, I'd see Courtney in the kitchen. And she'd be like, "Alexa, can you order me like some coffee beans or something like that?" And when she left the room, I was like, "Alexa, order me a gimp mask," <laughs> and then. <laughs> And then these these like leather zipped up like masks would like turn up at the house, but Courtney didn't know that she'd ordered them, oh and her assistant would like god. open it and be like, "Oh my god, oh, I, I didn't see that." And I ended up ordering like 
10 or 11 of them and they're, and they're just scattered around the house and Courtney was trying to sell her piano once and I put all of them on the top of the piano so oh. these strangers came in to view this piano and just saw all this like bondage wear on it but, um, okay let's get to the six foot penises then I can't believe this is like prime time radio yeah. we're going from oh, give no, no. We have. by the way t uh, the the, the tour is on. Buy your tickets. Yes. Okay, now mm. back to the penis. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Sam Smith was hanging out at our, what show was it? I don't know. Uh, the, I Heart Festival. Yeah, I in Vegas. Sam says, six foot penis. And Sharon, I'm like, you're kidding me. He said, no, no. Now, the question is this. Oh, yeah. When you have a six foot two marble penis delivered, do you pay for the crane to move it around or you just dump the dinger at the door? <laughs> so, so yes, uh, yes, yes, I am. I am paying for shippage. But actually okay. going back, going back to Capaldi. So I got Capaldi he, when he moved into this house. <laughs> um, you can, you know, when you go to zoos and they have those huge vinyl dinosaurs, like oh, yeah. huge. I found the company that make them. So I ordered one of these for Lewis's house, like a huge Stegosaurus. Oh. And it arrived and he didn't know what it was. Just this massive thing turned up and he had to go into town rent a forklift come back take it off and open it up and it just and it just turned out to be a giant st stegosaurus um so yes with with sam's um statue yeah. we were at my house and i'd had a bunch made for elton's birthdays to to choose to w which one to send to elton a variety um, to choose from uh yeah you know Different like shapes and sizes totally totally Whoa. but sam sam saw one of them and said can you make a six foot two one and i was like yeah so here we are. No wow. By the way, so uh, the moral of the story is Ed Sheeran is one of the best gift givers he in the really world. Is. Yeah. Well, I, you know. Yeah, yes, you are. Yeah, I, I like, I, it's not just Sam though. Like I, there's loads of like radio interviews, viewers that I've done around the world that have heard about the one that I've sent to Elton. So I've sent them a bunch of, like they, I, a, a load have gone out. There was a Diamante one. There was one that was like painted like the Australian flag. Oh my there's, gosh. Yeah. Wow. There's a few out wow. there. But what I love is because it's marble, it's going to last for like hundreds of thousands of <laughs> yes. years. So in like 2,000 years when they're excavating who we are now, they'll be like, what is this? Why is this? <laughs> well, I wonder what the reasoning they're going to come up with will be. What's that? I said, I wonder what the reasoning they're going to come up with will be. Like this but, was a very important piece. Here's yeah. what I'm thinking. I'm thinking you should send me like seven of them. I'll have like a penis Stonehenge behind my house. Yeah, I mean, t to be honest, I need to find, I need to find an American penis carver really because it would be so much cheaper than shipping everything over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. if any, if anyone is listening, if there's any stonemasons in in the New York State area that would like to carve a yeah. penis for Elvis. Uh, seven, a, seven penises. Oh, yeah, Stonehenge. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> okay, what else is on my list? Uh, oh, wait, David Beckham. What, when you're hanging out with David Beckham, which... How'd you know I hung out with David Beckham? There were pictures online. Oh. So, what do you talk about? Really? Uh, yeah, this is a good question. You're asking this well, question. Well, we're, yes. we're neighbors. Like, it's... Oh, like, you are? Yeah, so I grew, I grew up, obviously, like, Be Beckham is, like, the... Goat. Yeah, like, it, when... Most people in England are fans of Manchester United because they grew up watching David. I mean, most people from my generation, David Beckham played for Manchester United and everyone just became right. number seven, Beckham, all of that. Um, and I moved into this house and I met Victoria and she was like, can you uh, come around and teach my son some guitar chords? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> wicked. Um, and then just made friends with David and Vict Victoria from then. And I just, you, I see him in random spots. Like we live, we live basically next door to each other in, in London. But, you know, I was in a pizza restaurant the other night. I walked in and he was there. And then we have like a long catch up. Like, and it's, I, I really, really, really like him. I really like him. God, I had so much fun in London when we were there. I didn't want to leave. Yeah. I can see me living in London. Yeah, just well, I'm actually moving to the states again. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be here for. Let's just trade houses. Tour. Yeah, yeah. You stay in my place. I'll stay at yours. I reckon you got a good house. He does. Yeah. He does. Yeah. <laughs> I got room for Stonehenge penis. <laughs> got that much room. Actually, if I'm sending them though, Elvis, like, like honestly, don't just, don't just oh, put no. them. You people have to see them. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I've got public spaces yeah. that they will be, and it, it will. Yeah. Someone hey. texted in that you should call it Stonehead. <laughs> we could do that. <laughs> <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> it, we, maybe in our new studio. Hey, I, I, okay, wait. I gotta, you got to tell me if this is your autograph. How many things do you sign? Uh, not a lot now, you know, because I've because uh, well, because you know, there's there's all there's there's fans and then there's autograph hunters and fans yes. also end up buying stuff from eBay. From I would rather oh, yeah. see fans and sign it for free than them spend like fifty quid on that. something. So mm -hmm. I. Um, 
when I release CD singles now, because mm -hmm. I, I still love CDs, and CDs are, are almost a dying art. But I think they'll come back, like vinyls come back. I feel like yeah. CD, and I've, I've just bought a load of cassettes again and got a cassette oh, player. Cassette, my, but I, when yeah. I bring out CD singles, I sign the CD singles, and I do like 5,000 of them, and fans buy them. And that, I feel like that's a way to, because it's a dollar to get, basically. Right. I yeah. like that. Okay, well, but we found some things. You know, we have to clear out the closet before we move uptown. So this is an autographed Elvis Duran Morning Show shirt. We think that is that your signature? No. <laughs> I told you, was it? We don't know whose it is. We can't read it. We can't figure that out. Thanks for something. Love you, Mucho. No, love you, Uncle. Uncle. Oh, what? Mucho. Maybe it is Mucho. Or, but that's not your signature. Do you have a nephew? Uh, I, I, no, Uncle Elvis has that, many nephews. That is me. That is, okay, no, hold on. That is so, my so signature. This, so this oh, is, this that is, is a, my signature. A little piano, a toy piano. Right? <laughs> so which one? Okay, we have several signatures on here. Who are they? I, I found a love. <laughs> that's Niall, Niall Horan. Horan. Okay. I think that's Jason Derulo. Oh. Okay. Uh, that, that definitely is me. Okay. That okay. is okay. it. All right. Well, who's I, that? I, I don't know who that is. I, JB, is that Justin Bieber? Could be. Oh, could be. Might be. Who's that? I, I don't know. We have to take this uptown, man. Yeah, yeah. that's this gotta is, come this with This is us. worth something. <laughs> or is that or, or Jonas Brothers, right? I no, I guess they'd all yeah, sign they all their sign own. Separate, they do a collective yeah. JB. And, and it's a piano, too, which oh, is kind yeah. of fun. All right, just making sure. Okay, well, we're, we're getting all this stuff off the list. Uh, can you sign my Funko Pop? No, yeah, of no, course. No, yeah. No, no. She'll have it on eBay this no, afternoon. No, I will not. Yes, will. No, no, I will don't not. Do it, Ed, don't do it. Put my no, name what, on it. What I do, my name on it. What I do with, when, when you're like positive, it's an autograph hunter, and they're like, oh, it's for my sister or yeah, my yeah, daughter yeah, yeah. or whatever. Your name on it. No, no, I'll, I'll just be like, well, FaceTime him now, and I'll like, have a conversation Ooh, with him. That's cool. But they never do. No, but that's that's They never do. That's mine. All right. No, I want to get back to this tour because I'm getting looks from across the room. Like, stop talking about penises and talk about the tour. It is mad how that has become like this new... Like, every, like I, I went on um, Colbert on um, Friday and that was like the main topic of conversation. But, but anyway, the <laughs> tour. The tour. Well, I know, but I, I want to... I'm sure this thing's going to sell a few tickets. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, d demand was there enough that we've, we're doing an extra uh, Toronto... Gillette and MetLife and so far I can't I can't I can't remember all the ones we're doing extra ones at but that we're we're doing those ones I think. So once you come out with a tour schedule, is it are you always massaging it, adding more venues? I mean, it's it's not just a set in stone schedule. You'll start. No, no, it is because of because of how the show is and how long it takes to build. Most I would say ninety percent of the tour is one city one venue because right. you have to then ship it mm. to the next place and it's like it's a big it's a big show it's i've got 72 tons of steel above me and the, all the it's i can't i i can't explain how difficult the structure to hold the pa system is but the cable system of we've just made a documentary on it because like it's that much of a wow. feat of it's 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 a really cool show basically when, when's this documentary coming out do we know I think it's coming out just before my Australian tour in Australia, but I'm sure we've got the footage of it to play. I don't know about you. I'm a total geek when it comes to gear and backstage and props and staging. Mm. And well, this is a t type of thing. It's basically to get the 72 tons in the air. I, I wanted the sight lines to be like a lot of times when you do in, in the round shows, there's always like four massive steel things that hold up the, the, the top bit. But right. all of this is like a cable net system. So for them to put it up, the same weight has... So everything has to happen exactly at the same time. So you've got crews all around and every every single bit of the stage in six parts is put up at exactly the same time for the weight of it and it's built over i think they've got it down to like 27 hours to build it or something like that but in Damn. It, this is why we can't be in a city for more than like a night because we have to get to the next city for the next saturday to build build it again it's all a part of it so yeah. look at this ed sheeran in the day he was just a guy in his guitar and now he's a guy in his Stadium filled with yeah, but you compete with the other stadium guys when you're in stadiums. When I was playing in theaters, you know, I was I would play a gig and maybe like the next day, like whoever, like insert another acoustic artist here. But when you're playing stadiums, I'll play a stadium one Saturday, and the next Saturday might be like Metallica or Kenny Chesney or Taylor Swift or like Harry's, you know, and and their shows are all or Coldplay. Like you're competing with Coldplay's show because people don't want to go to a my show and be like. 
Well, actually, the Coldplay one was better. You have to have it as a really, really high standard wow. when 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 you're in stadiums. The pressure's on. Well, yeah, but but also you have the ability to do whatever. Like, if you, do you want to do fireworks? Sure. Open roof. Do you want to do flames? Sure. Do you want to do some menu? Yeah. Check off on this little right. menu what you want. Have you seen that they're building one in Vegas? I think they're going to build one in London. The MSG Sphere. Mm. No. Look, it's called the Sphere, isn't it? Can you Google that? Yeah. Look it up. This is going to be the place everyone's going to want to play. It oh, looks like cool. a huge globe, and the walls inside are such where the lighting, uh, there's a lighting system already there. Wow. And, oh, it, wow. and it does movies and, and videos. It's weird, isn't it? You can spend all this money on doing something like that, but a place like Red Rocks is still yeah. the yeah. best yeah. place well, to play. I was going to say, so do cool. you have a favorite place? It is be- well, Red Rocks is incredible to play, but um, in... I think the Ryman in Nashville oh my was my favorite venue in oh. America. And I also loved Radio City. Radio, Radio City, yeah. it's got the history yeah. there. There's yeah, ghosts. Yeah, yeah. I, there's just something in there's something in the walls sometimes when you play uh, venues. And it's something that you kind of lose in um, ar- like arenas because they kind of all have the same layout. Whereas st- stadiums all have a different kind of... Vibe, vibe in, especially if you play in uh, in Europe, because you know you might be playing something that's from like the 1930s that had had like the first World Cup in or something like that. You right. know, they, they they all have different stories to them. Well, actually, and in, in the the venue actually turns into a part <laughs> of your show. We'll get to that in a second. Hold on. So so look, look, from going to you know doing a coffee house with a guitar to the stadiums, how how is music? And this is kind of a heady question. How is music different? For you and in your heart now than it was well, it's back a, in the day. Is it has it your view of your music changed? Or totally. It, I mean, I'm I'm a, uh, all all artists are selfish songwriters. All of them. No one no one writes songs for the people. People write songs for themselves to make themselves feel feel better. It's like it's like a form of therapy. You feel you feel bad some days. You write a song about feeling bad, and then you release it, and then suddenly it belongs to everyone else. You know, and then it's everyone else's song. So a song like Perfect. I wrote for my wife, but now it's a song that belongs to everyone with everyone's partners, you know, and I've, and I'm very much, it's now a communal thing. So when I first started out, music's a very solitary thing. You write it in your bedroom and then you play a gig and you see people connect to it. And then suddenly it's a communal thing. So the bigger, the big gigs have got, it's just lovely. You, I, I go out on stage with a song like Perfect and I look out in the crowd and you see 90,000 stories of that song. And it might be like a tiny story of like, I heard it in the car once with my best friend and we were we had a good time. Or it might be this was my first dance. Or like, I, I've, I've found it more since becoming a dad and having these massive life moments. The songs that frame those life moments are like the most important songs in my life. I can hear the song that my first daughter was born to on the radio and it takes me back to the moment of first holding her in my arms you know and oh. and being being able to write songs that you see firsthand these stories you see you're at these gigs and firsthand you see you know we have proposals at the gig and stuff and it's mm. yeah it's such a communal thing now it doesn't feel like a solitary i'm writing songs in my bedroom thing it's like a, i've written songs and and also in these sports, sorry, I'm going on here, but also no, in these in these sports stadiums, they're they're built for competition, and they're built for home and away teams to come. And you know, thirty percent of the crowd will be away, and seventy percent of the crowd will be home, and it will be an environment where it's a competition. Whereas you do a concert, and everyone's there for the same thing, and everyone is going to enjoy the same songs in the same way, but slightly differently because of their stories around the songs. It's it's really lovely to see it on such a scale it's really nice and also being in the round you're it's not your end on and you're playing to people and someone in the nosebleeds is like miles away and you can't i can literally see everyone from where i am because you're as close to everyone as everyone is to you because it's important to you to yeah. be able to see more people totally yeah i mean it, it's it's a bit difficult when you need the toilet because you're out on <laughs> a stage and you can't get <laughs> back anywhere so you kind of make sure you have a pee before you go on stage basically okay. good to know yeah. <laughs> have you ever written a song like for your wife or for someone that you've actually kept for yourself totally yeah totally I, I wrote a song for my mum that just my mum has and it's Aww. you know but that's but that's the things with songs it's your choice of what to release and i i'm very aware when songs are released they become public domain they become yeah. everyone else's stories and 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 stuff so there's definitely songs i've written and i'm like do you know what i'm not going to release this one this is this is special to me and i'm just going to keep this i've written songs for the first song that i wrote for my daughter no one's heard and no one will probably hear it's oh, just it's a so song good. that i wrote for her when she was asleep and see Aww. that word 
I use when Ed Sheeran is here, I use, I use the word gift a lot. Have you guys yeah. noticed that? Yeah. When you perform for us, I cry. It's a gift. Now, you're, <laughs> your, your music has turned into something. It's actually the gift you give the world. And I think it's awesome. Thank you, man. So you were talking about how writing songs is sort of like a selfish project, mm. but you've gotten to do some other stuff that I would totally do the same thing if I could. So you loved Game of Thrones. You mm. got to be a little side part in Game of Thrones. Totally. Never talked about it until it actually happened, right? Yeah. I. Do you know, that that's probably... I'd say one of the things I'm most famous for, but like not in a positive way. But whenever oh, I, so cool. but but whenever I see people and they're just like, "You ruined Game of Thrones," <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, honestly, if you were put in the same situation and the creators came to you and said, "We've written you a part," you'd be like, "Cool, Hell yeah, I'm of in." Course. Yeah, and I'm like that. Like I, I literally, my, my you can ask my manager. My like threshold for no is very, very, very low. So if I get asked to do so, like I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing a character in a, an English comedy that I'm literally um, going to the toilet in a bush, and that's my part. That's the whole thing. Yeah, and I was like, they told me my part. I was like, yeah, that sounds kind of funny. And then we filmed it, and it is kind of funny. But like, it's yeah, I'm I'm basically I'm I'm an open book when it comes and anything that isn't outside of music. Like music, I'm I want to release good stuff. But when it's uh, you know TV and film, if I'll basically do anything i'm not an actor so it's fun for me to spend the day being trying to be an actor so elvis was a dead body on law and order svu yeah i heard I about this i think you this. should slide into the dead body role <laughs> dead body is the best role ever you yeah. don't do anything well this hold your breath but this is the problem since <laughs> since game of thrones there's like a real like people are kind of scared to because they know they're like i and i understand like i have a very recognizable face but if i was a dead body they'd be like why is Ed Sheeran playing a dead That's body. That's the and... beauty of it. <laughs> Don't you want to be on Ted Lasso or something like that? I'm actually so I, I've actually written a song for Ted Lasso. They really? are, they, they asked oh, me God. to write a song for the oh. final final season, and um, uh, it's really good. It's oh. really really good. Oh, I can't wait. I for can't Ted wait. Lasso to come yeah, back. I know. Me hey, too. I got a call here, and then hold on. Melissa wants to say hi to you. Hold on. Nope. You, yeah, you got to put your headphones on there, Ed. Uh, hello, Melissa. Hello, Elvis. How are you? Well, I'm great because Ed Sheeran is here. Say hi to Ed. Hey. Hi, Ed. Oh, my gosh. How are you doing? <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah, she's I'm doing well. How are you? Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. She, I've, just, for... I've just seen what this message is about. And... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead. What did you want to say? Uh, what did you want to put out there into the universe, Melissa? I mean, we can, you know, I work for a marble company. We fabricate, we deliver, we install stone of all kinds. You could pick whatever kind of stone Amazing. pieces you'd like. Can I? Can I? Pick can you do one for um, Steve, Stephen Colbert as well? Wanted one. Can I? Absolutely. I feel like M Melissa. I feel like there's a lot of business coming your way from yeah. me. <laughs> this is awesome, Melissa. So if you're just joining us, I hope so. Ed, Ed because is, I'm late for work today. This is going to save me. Um, uh, <laughs> Melissa, obviously, don't air it on um, the radio. But can you get me your email address? And I'm like. I'm, I'm going to set this up like now. We'll so it, we'll I don't want okay, Elvis absolutely. to. Get, I don't. I don't want Elvis to wait ages um, for this. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. But if people are wondering what we're talking about, I mean, Melissa, your company, your stone company, could actually fabricate a a six foot tall marble penis for Steve um, Colbert. Any, yeah. And Elvis, any Andrea, you want, a, any song. Andrea, my radio guy is literally looking at you like we're meant to be promoting a tour and all we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> Andrea, Andrea Gaddis, she secretly wants a six foot marble penis too. <laughs> bone, bone hinge. Bone, so. bone hinge. Okay. okay we'll get to her Melissa, can you get me your um, email address? I'm and I will. Get it off the air. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we, yeah, we want to. Say, also, when we uh, when we get that. Also, do you, do you guys have a website I could go to off the air too? Um, yes, yeah, I can I'm, give all that information to you guys. Yeah, because we got to make sure you, you guys are... You, you got to get the right colors. You, well, you got to know, right you know what you're doing. What if <laughs> right. you don't, yeah, yeah. I don't know what you're doing. You know, I just got to see your... I think you should going. be surprised. It should be a surprise penis. It needs I really to look like a penis. So. Well, yeah, but... If it shows up, it looks like a poodle, it ain't no, working. No, no, that's true. All right, Melissa, thank you so much. Please, hold on one second. Can you get over? Okay, good. All right, I'm glad we got that done. Okay, I'm Andrea, I'm we want this, to talk about the tour. I love that this brings people so much joy, it you know? Does. It does. Six feet of joy. Um, all right, look. The music, music's where it's at. Mm. And the way, the way you can actually connect and identify within yourself like what music means to you, I think that's important because we need to know. And we're all on a road, on a journey somewhere. Like We all feel differently about the things that excite us most in life today versus 10 years ago. It's good to keep up with that. It's it's good to like. Do you ever like look at yourself in the mirror and go, Ed? Here's what you're thinking and feeling today. I mean, do you ever go in? Are you ever like multi? I mean, extremely aware of your 
your thoughts and where your heart is for the day and how you're feeling? Um, yeah, yeah. I think I think everyone has like massive ups and massive downs. Um, and yeah, I'm uh, yeah super aware of how I'm feeling. Yeah, I don't I don't really know what 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 else to say to that. But yeah, <laughs> I'm, uh, yes. What are you feeling right now? Uh, I feel joy that I'm bringing so much joy to you by getting you seven. <laughs> Seven will be expensive, but we'll work it out. Okay. <laughs> I, I, don't need I, I, I can just collect them, like, one at a time. Maybe totally, totally. Don't, maybe totally, don't yeah. worry about totally. seven, seven oh my six-foot penises. You should reward him for things as time goes on. Like yeah, yeah. Like, first penis. Do you know what? I could yeah. get... Uh, I mean, if, if they're not six foot... Yo, I could get you one for every time. I, find out how many times I've been on the show, and I'll get you one yeah. for every time oh, I've been on the show. I think we should get a small one to like just have in no, the room. No, 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 no. <laughs> size, size, oh, sorry. size. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, It'll be a talking piece. I got to say, you know, if this is your tenth or twelfth visit, I don't know. Uh, every time you you mm-hmm. show up, you just you're here, and we well, thank you. It. And that yeah. Look, uh, the North American leg of the Ed Sheeran tour, the mathematics tour, a mathematics tour. Uh, you got to get tickets if they're available. I would, I would go online right now. I get that going uh, because this is the tour that everyone's going to be talking about here in the states. I'm so excited for you. Thank you, thank you. Definitely come down to it as well, man. Oh no, no, done, done deal. And I will pay retail for this. (laughs) I don't, I don't ever get free tickets. I'm not. I'm going to beg for tickets. No, (laughs) No, we got to fund these penises he's buying. (laughs) That is true. (laughs) Should I play this? Yeah, why not? Tell them what it is. Uh, it's this uh, song that, so, um, basically, my record label came to me ages ago, and they t- talked to me about doing a song in Fortnite, and I was like, well, I don't play Fortnite. And they were like, well, what do you play? And I still actively play Pokemon. So I was like, well, if you can get if you can get a song in a Pokemon game, I'll be bang up for that. So we did a song <laughs> for Pokemon, oh. and it's called Celestial. And it's Ed Sheeran. Thank you for coming in today. Yeah. 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 The Mercedes-Benz Interview Lounge.